Top Med Talk. Welcome to Top Med Talk. This piece comes from our live coverage of Anesthesiology 2022. It is the single largest gathering of anesthesiologists in the world and the annual meeting of the American Society of Anesthesiologists. Now, our live coverage is available now at live.topmedtalk.com. More details in the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe and please help us boost our signal by sharing this podcast wherever and whenever you can. So excited to be here at the American Society of Anesthesiologists in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm Desiree Chapel, your host today. I'm joined by my co-host, Professor Monty Mythen and Professor Saul Aronson. Hello, Monty. How are you? Good morning, Desiree. Great, great to be here. It so it's a common response. Really great to be here. I've just actually come off the, the stage, which I was uh, which was a great, great session. I thought yeah. about intraoperative hypotension. Very wow. well received. Good discussion. Good. I can't wait to hear more about that uh, for sure. And Saul, great conversation so far this morning. And yeah? I have been here with you the whole time yeah. and I unfortunately missed Monty's <laughs> session. Yes, I know. But um, so excited that the American Society of Anesthesiologists, we want to send a huge thank you for all the support uh, to be here at this meeting. This booth is because of them. We couldn't have done it without you. So thank you very, very much. And to all the sponsors to help Top Med Talk uh, get the word out there. We are a free global perioperative medicine podcast. Uh, we have we can only do this with their support. So thank you. Thank you very much. Now, um, gentlemen, we are in person live, like I said, booth 2245. So if you're listening, it'd be great to have you stop by if you're here in person. If not, though, check us out on the live stream. If you're listening to this podcast afterwards, anytime over the next three days, you can find us at live.topmedtalk.com live.topmedtalk.com all you have to do is enter enter your name and email address we'll send you an email back just to make sure that everybody's in the right place and has some more information about the EBPOM evidence-based perioperative medicine educational hub Uh, but you will have access to all the conversations through that throughout the entire weekend and and they can give that link to anyone so that's friends family we can give it to the kids if they want to watch the whole yes yeah Yes. Yeah. so you can see you can make sure you know the kids see mom and dad I should have told my kids uh, (laughs) (laughs) dad's on TV live.topmedtalk.com yes absolutely and a lot of this content will all be hosted on our Top Med Talk stage at live.ebpom.org, which is our, our educational hub. You can go um, on that site and check out all that information, get more. All right, so great conversation so far. We're just gearing up here on Saturday morning of Anesthesiology 2022. Our next guest, though, I'm so excited about to be able to catch up with Dr. Devinder Ramsing. Devinder, it's so wonderful to have you back. Thank you, Desiree. It's always a pleasure to be here. Now, you're the Vice President of Clinical Research and Development at Butterfly Now, which is a little bit different than the last time we talked yes, to you. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so i made a transition. As you know, um, handheld ultrasound is uh, an area of passion for me in academic medicine. It's been something that I've been trying to champion for the special of anesthesiology for quite some time. Um, and excited now to be uh, you know, a part of the team here at Butterfly Ultrasound uh, because the missions really align, I think, with, with the growth and interest in the specialty of anesthesiology. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, for our our listeners and who are viewing today, tell us what your background, just a little bit more, where you came from. Yeah, so I'm a cardiac anesthesiologist. I still practice in Southern California, Loma Linda Medical Center and University of California, Irvine. Um, And I started my career as a cardiac anesthesiologist, um, had the blessing of being trained in transesophageal and transthoracic echo. And very early in my career, I I found myself doing more transthoracic echoes um, to help perioperative management than just doing transesophageal for the cardiac OR. That lended into learning more about what POCUS is. This is in 2010. And, yeah. uh, and right, POCUS, it, what is POCUS, What is POCUS, actually? exactly. <laughs> so point of, care, um, point of care ultrasound, the idea of, again, providing ultrasound at the moment of care to a patient and being able to not only acquire the image but interpret the image to help make real-time decisions. Can I, Desiree, just take us back on the yeah. journey a little yeah, bit for a moment? Do. So, I mean, Devinder, Dave, as I know you, yes, uh, you were one of the first people that we interviewed at an ASA about this journey to the point of care ultrasound getting more user friendly. But I'm just going to use Sol as not as Sol the co-presenter for a second, but Sol as a, as an expert. I've been into your office, Sol, and there's a there's a certificate on the <laughs> on the wall about something to do with cardiac ultrasound, which is where 
Davinda started his journey and it's got a zero 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 one on it or something like that like the first certificate <laughs> in the world you know, is that about right I, uh, that is right I, I, were you even born then <laughs> um, you know we had this conversation yeah. actually I remember um, yeah it, I wanted your jerk when you first started because you were a pioneer for echocardiography for the specialty of anesthesiology and yes this was when I was in medical school oh so. goodness he oh was goodness. born I oh was goodness. born but uh, Desiree probably was my <laughs> Anyway, wow. very briefly, Sol, that journey, so people can understand how where we've been. This journey has matured to this point. <laughs> it, now. It's it's really fun to watch through the lens that I'm looking at it through. Um, yeah, when I was much taller and thinner, um, and had more hair, <laughs> I remember being able to. Um, you know, sort of try to introduce, if you will, this this concept of ultrasound for perioperative care. There were a handful of us who were real pioneers, and I was really lucky to be around them at, at a time. Um, but my gosh, I, if I may just really, really quickly share the anecdote. Um, I, I remember, like yesterday, bringing in a machine that was as big as a sub-zero uh, yes. refrigerator, in, in, into, in, <laughs> in, bigger than this couch, um, with a monitor that was smaller than my iPhone, um, and everything else was just accoutrement, and, and, it, and it generated this crazy loud noise and heat, and, and the surgeon was upset because it made the room too hot, and I finally convinced him that it was okay, and it was, it was where we started this journey, and now we're using you know, devices as big as an iPhone or smaller to to do uh, Echo, and it's just a it's a wonderful, wonderful um, journey to watch and and to see people like yourself carry on with the baton in their hand and running the race. And and fast forward that to to yeah, the butterfly technology. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So I mean to, to continue that journey, right? So now ultrasound technology has evolved to the point where it truly is at the ready for point of care, right? It literally fits in your pocket. Butterfly is the only commercial solution that provides a all-in-one probe that allows you to assess any part of the body, any organ system, whether that's abdominal, vascular access, uh, regional for nerve blocks, to cardiac imaging, all from a single probe because of its unique technology of having ultrasound produced from a chip. Um, and that's exciting to connect about with the what's happened with the development of POCUS for the specialty of anesthesiology. I think it's been great to be part of the journey. Um, Saul, as you, you did with echocardiography as a whole, it's really been amazing to see what in the last, say, seven years yeah. has happened for handheld POCUS in the specialty of anesthesia. It really has become from something that was, I remember having this conversation of what is POCUS, to now it's not so much what is POCUS, it's how do I do it. Yes. And to the point now, or even now we have a certificate now endorsed by the American Society of Anesthesia on POCUS, right? Oh, Which has great. been very exciting yeah. to see that, that evolution. Yeah, fantastic. Well, walk us through a little bit about the technology. And, you know, people are like, can I really see this on my phone? Does it really work? Of course, there are other people that instantly put it in their hands and like, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> walk I mean, us through that technology a little bit. Absolutely. So, like, I think, you know, for it depends, you know, one of the blessings of, of the specialty of anesthesiology is that anesthesia and ultrasound have been married together for more than several decades now. And if, if you are, are not new to ultrasound and you grab a butterfly, You'll, you'll get that experience of, wow, it, is, it really is something yeah. that you can do a lot with, you know, at the ready. So, you know, from a, a perspective of all the different frequencies, all the different probe types that you're looking for, all the different presets that you're looking for, all in a single interface. Um, and on top of that, you know, Butterfly uh, has a component of it that is very focused on making it streamlined and easy for the user. And so that's everything from the UI to the ability of our, our, our AI tools to provide things like needle visualization and biplane imaging, all from, again, a handheld pocket device. Wow. So, so obviously cardiac is um, this foundation of ultrasound as it is applied to the perioperative space. And, and we, we've also learned how ultrasound helps um, nerve blocks and, yes. and visualization. Um, there are other, if you will, domains, you know, particularly in critical care, thoracic ultrasound. Um, speak to them as, as established and what next should we be seeing for applications of ultrasound within our critical care perioperative space. Uh, oh, I'd love to talk about it. You know, my mantra has been, if you look at you know, the acute care setting and you, you lump in emergency medicine environments, critical care environments, and OR environments, 
why should the skill set of the providers change because the acuity of the patients are the same, right? The same you know, situations occur. Um, but if you look at that, th we're still in a state where the, the, the skill sets and the technologies available is different across those different settings. And I think one of the benefits of what, of what you know, societies like ASA are doing um, and technologies like Butterfly, it's allowing a level playing field, allowing people to be able to now integrate uh, ultrasound into their care to be able to help standardize the way we assess patients across any acute care setting. And so specifically, hemodynamic assessment, cardiovascular injury assessment, pulmon uh, pulmonology findings, all of those now are, which historically, if you look at the, the space of POCUS, was initially adopted in the emergency medicine uh, setting, now has branched into the critical care setting. So now you can use handheld ultrasound to identify routinely pneumothoraces, pleural effusions, and now in the OR, that is now yeah. part of the integration for the for training. What about preoperative assessment? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Can, you, can you just clarify, Dave, because I'm, I'm an ultrasound occasional user, or at least I was sure. when practicing clinically until recently, but I'm by no means an expert or actually that much of a, a, you know enthusiast. enthusiast to get into it. Well, I think it's great. I remember when the machines would come around, they'd come around with a range of probes. You'd kind of think, oh, this guy's person's cool. They've got a whole yeah. choice of tools. <laughs> but you've just got one. What, what's... What makes it different? How do you manage to do all those things with just the one thing? Yeah, no, it's a it's a great question, and fundamentally, what I'm so excited about talking about the butterfly product as being so unique is how ultrasound is produced from that device, right? So if you think about traditional ultrasound devices, all required these piezoelectric crystals yeah. that produce ultrasound and receive ultrasounds. Now, the arrangement of those crystals from a manufacturing have to be in a certain area in certain space to get the type of ultrasound image that we're historically used to doing. The benefit of Butterfly through its inventions is that now there is no crystals. It's all done through an electronic chip that allows the production of ultrasound waves and it allows you to change how that production of ultrasound waves occurs at the ready, right? And so that's what allows you to have that abdominal probe, allows you to have the cardiac probe, allows you to have that vascular access probe all from a single device. Is there a trade-off? Sounds too good to be true. Is there any well, you know, like uh, that's an uh, open discussion. Always the, the, it's interesting when you talk about uh, ultrasound in, in it's you know it's it's like many things it's in the eye of the beholder in yeah. terms of uh, what do you think about one specific type of uh, ultrasound image to another I can tell you at least from my own personal experience for being in the space for 15 years and talking to many providers uh, the ability of handheld ultrasound to do the vast majority of the work in terms of providing vascular access support regional support assessing acute care settings looking at gastric volume things like that I think our device excels at those components. There are a lot of people, and I, I've used the product, um, full disclosure, and a big fan. <laughs> it, it's because of the ease of the product. You know, you don't have to run to the other side of the department, unplug it, run it back, if you can find it. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, you have it in your pocket and you pull it out. A lot of people are saying that it's kind of becoming, it's going to become our next stethoscope, or, I mean, it will replace stethoscopes. You know, I, I think the hope is that I, I'd like to think of it as, an, and one of the mantras here at Butterfly is that we want to make it as an advanced assessment tool. Yeah. Right? We really believe that why should, you, you know, again, if you look at point of care testing, the stethoscope, why that hasn't, which is the premier tool still used today by clinicians to assess patients at the bedside, why has so many, literally we're talking over, you know, 100 plus years before, since any invention has occurred to any technology in terms of bedside assessment. Ultrasound, I think, should be that next piece of technology, and the butterfly technology, I think, is the closest to getting us there. Yeah. And, and I think it's important, Monty, to, and please jump in if you think I'm overstating, the, the continuum of application of ultrasound. Yes. From the, the visual diagnostic yep. to the highly fidelity, quantitative, you know, competing right. with other radiologic modalities is, is that. It's a continuum. And, and the, uh, the butterfly or the POCUS if you will, um, space, it represents one part of that journey. Yes, exactly. And you're absolutely right. We're not looking at, you know, it, you're right. This is more not trying to compete, meaning that uh, there are formal ultrasound diagnostic studies that you do and perform because you want to know definitively a pathologic uh, finding, right? But there's many questions that need to be answered at the moment uh, in your patient for you to take a higher quality of care for that patient. And that is more of the space that I attune to, to POCUS and handheld ultrasound. And that's where Butterfly really, you know, is attempting to, to make a big difference in. 
Yeah. Well, I was going to ask about, um, is this purely for anesthesia providers or is this kind of, are you guys looking we, at, you know, putting this in the hands of other types of providers, I clinicians? Mean, I, I'll tell you, I'm excited about the fact that we look holistically across healthcare landscape to see how this technology, when you look at its fundamental capability, how it can provide the most good to clinicians to improve their quality of care they can provide patients. And that's Butterfly's mission. Uh, the specialty of anesthesiology, I am an anesthesiologist and I, I and it is definitely a key component, but we have a wide landscape of where we think we can potentially have a significant impact. Yeah. Well, and then speaking specifically to um, anesthesia in the ACGME guidelines and certification pathway, specifically for anesthesia, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So exciting. You know, one of, you know, we all uh, love to hear, uh, you know, over the times, it's been great to see how you go from research to proving something as a valuable education to workshop to now finally getting societies to endorse. Yeah. And that's, that's been about a 12-year journey for uh, the specialty of anesthesia, which was the same journey that emergency medicine uh, did. But excited, yeah, in 2018 that ACGME included um, uh, point-of-care ultrasound as the requirement for anesthesiology training now. So because, again, that sets this new standard for our specialty. Mm -hmm. It says that anesthesiologists, this is a core competency for anesthesiologists in, in the United States. Um, and again, it will ultimately provide a higher quality of perioperative care I feel very confident about. So so that's out there. And it's great to see that, you know, ASA has now has, you know, a formal focus committee uh, around this and also has a new certificate that helps support those who are post-training, uh, you know, learn the skill as well. Fantastic. Well, tell us about then um, all the training and the things that we need to adopt this type of technology, you know, de independent of what type of clinician that you are. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, fundamentally, if you look at uh, the stethoscope analogy is applicable, but also just the ability of how you can use ultrasound imaging to do a better assessment of, of your patient. And, uh, you know, Butterfly takes that approach. So if you looked at our website, our learning modules are all focused on clinical questions and then talking about how our presets apply to those clinical questions um, to help provide, you know, an avenue for us to be able to educate and, and serve, uh, you know, a wider group of clinicians. So, yeah, I mean, I think it starts with there, uh, understanding what ultrasound can be used for today. So, all to your point about in that continuum, it's really now how you can use um, ultrasound at the moment to be able to assess what's going on with my patient is shorter breath. Why Why is that? Why my patient's hypotensive? Why is that? Well, ultrasound can really help you answer those questions if you have the skill set for knowing how to look for volume assessment, cardiac function, pulmonary function. Um, and yeah, so I mean, and there's many avenues now to get those educations. And can you learn on a simulator now, initially? Is yeah. that part of it? There, there's definitely simulation training. There's, um, you know, the world, I think, you know, all of us feel the impact of COVID and we, most of it has been, uh, you know, uh, negative. But I think one of the big positives is that we've really accelerated our ability and adoption of online education, right? And belief that we can do this. And so one of the unique features that Butterfly has is that we have some unique technology that allows remote education support mm -hmm. and has allowed us to, you know, our, our cloud platform is something that's unique in that, you know, the access to our education modules and things like that can be integrated uh, all in one solution. But where do we find those? It's off the website, all butterflynetwork.com. Butterflynetwork.com. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. The, where we want to send people is butterflynetwork.com. Butterflynetwork.com. And, um, yeah, you'll, you'll see there, you know, what you'll, you'll see a lot of the mission-driven approach that, that we talked about today. You'll see our, you know, a, a tease of once you get a login, you can get into access into what our education system could potentially look like. But, you know, I, I do want to mention that also it's important to realize that Butterfly is a unique hardware solution, but we haven't stopped there in the fact that we actually have an integrated solution of hardware to using uh, software, AI tools, to also an integrated cloud solution. So we, we really try to be a, a one-stop shop for being able to be in totality your ultrasound solution. Yeah, as a provider on the ground, I don't always understand what a cloud solution is. So can you just, just br yeah. briefly break that down? So yeah, funny man, I'm, uh, I'm probably more or less similar to you, Desiree, yeah. on this, but I would say one thing about, about this is that Cloud integration, um, Butterfly is a unique platform in that it is ultrasound uh, technology agnostic. So you can, if you have uh, that service, you can use other types of ultrasound devices plus the cloud uh, connectivity with our with the Butterfly probe to have an entire integration of ultrasound imaging uh, for your facility. And and the, the unique thing about that is that 
our our uh, system is fundamentally built just like our UI on the probe. So we try to make it streamlined, efficient. We try to make it uh, something that allows the user to have the best experience on both ends. Yeah, and just connecting the dot, that's a, dots. It's important because to get credit for the blocks and the ultrasound that you're doing, you Archiving have to have is a key thing. You yes. have to have archives yes. of your images to yep. make that happen. So that is a great solution for that. Um, well, in closing, let's just talk about just very briefly over the horizon where you guys are looking because all of us get very excited about yeah. you know the yeah. potential. So, you know, I think like we, we've talked about, Butterfly has you know, developed a very novel piece of hardware that really is, has been a game changer in that landscape. We, we have, we talked about the cloud. We know that the ability of AI and the, the ability for uh, and further support to provide data using, if you think about ultrasound as just a data signal and think about how that can be processed in new ways. Butterfly is looking at from that holistic lens about how we could potentially develop new technologies and new solutions that can give more information and give the, make the information easier to acquire. Uh, and from that principle, I think it's an exciting landscape to get us closer and closer to the ability of using handheld or sound it, you know, on more patients, more often, but make it faster, easier, with less training requirements, uh, because again, like we'll have, uh, you know, more assistance in the future. Yeah, that's great. Well, Devinder, thank you so much. It's always such a pleasure to great hear what you're you up to, and you are so passionate about Pocus and the use of ultrasound in the perioperative space. I love, I love it. Oh, thank great. you, Desiree. Thank you. It's always great to come talk, and it, it's been an exciting journey, right? Going yeah. from, again, what, what, you know, what is Pocus to now more about how do we actually implement how can it? I and do it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so it's yeah. been a great journey, and thank you again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening to Top Med Talk. Now, be sure to check us out, the live stream, throughout the entire weekend till Monday, I think, at 1 um, on live.topmedtalk.com. That's live.topmedtalk.com. But we have other conversations. We have all these catalog that we had with Devinder over the years. You can find those at topmedtalk.com. You can also find a lot of the content at our live.ebpom.org site. That is the educational hub for EBPOM and Top Med Talk. EBPOM, to, or excuse me, Top Med Talk is the broadcasting arm of EBPOM. You can find all about it on the website. Please do check out those pre previous conversations because it will be really interesting to, to see the evolution. So, Devinder, thanks again. Monty Saul, thank you. Cheers. Great to see you. Thanks. Top Med Talk. Thanks for downloading Top Med Talk. Don't forget to subscribe via your podcatcher. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And also, don't forget, Top Med Talk is the broadcasting arm of EBPOM, evidence-based perioptive medicine. We'd love you to find out more about that. If you check out ebpom.org, you can find low prices on some of the conferences we're organizing around the world. Many of them are virtual and don't even involve you leaving your own Home. Check out ebpom.org now.